and then it just and it just decimated. <laughs> yeah, it just sprinted at you, and I was like, "Whoa, what's going on?" And I just, <laughs> like, I was jumping and panicking, like, "Whoa!" It was like being uh, Elden Ring for the first time. Whoa, what am I doing? I, and he, he killed me instantly. I completely. <laughs> I get this because the exact same thing happened to me. <laughs> really. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to a brand new episode of everyone's favorite podcast, The Critical Arcade. I'm your co-host, Nick. And I'm Dave. Hello, Dave. Hello, Nick. Are you well? <laughs> I'm well. I'm well, thank you. Because I've got my coffee. I knew that was coming. I'm going to be really upset when, you know, Nespresso <laughs> starts sending you free merchandise and I'm just sitting here with my water. <laughs> like Evian or whatever's out there. I'm drinking water. No, no. <laughs> like, I'll share. I'll share. I'll <laughs> share. Yeah, yeah. You and your mountain of Nespresso capsules just sitting Ooh. there. With the... <laughs> Don't get me excited. <laughs> anyway, Axiom Verge. This past week, we played the indie game as part of our new initiative, the Indy 500. Mm-hmm. Huh? Indy 500? I'm just oh, very exciting. glad we started yeah, this. Yeah, no doubt. It's, 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 it's an avenue I've never d- delved in before, and it's so fun. Like I said, it is. It is very much fun. fun. Yeah. Uh, this week, this past week, we played the 2015 indie darling Axiom Verge, a game highly inspired by oh, yeah. the classic, classic game Metroid. Yeah, and and, and it's and I was looking at it's made by a company called Thomas Hap Games, and I Thomas Hap is that a company or is that a guy? No, that's literally a guy. He was like he should have called. I, mean, <laughs> I read about it. he should have called it like a fun like gaming name, but he just couldn't be bothered, and so he just called it his name. And I was looking up, (laughs) it was one guy is the developer, the publisher, and the composer of the music and audio. So I was like, whoa. (laughs) That's that's impressive. Yeah, that is impressive. That's one big flex. So yeah, that's literally, this is his first game. He has got uh, a pedigree in all other games that he's been working in the industry for years, blah, blah, blah. But this is his first standalone game for his company. Yeah. Which is impressive. That's a lot of work. (laughs) The the first Thomas Hap game. Mm Hmm. Of many, hopefully. Hopefully, um, because this game was good. This game was really good. And I, I'm constantly surprised by how good these indie games are. I shouldn't be, but this indie mm. game is good. It's, like I say, this is one of, those, um, one of those strange scenarios. Were you a big Metroid fan? Did you play Metroid as a kid on Game Boy and, and I guess the Wii and stuff? I forget which other handheld uh, consoles it was. Were you a Metroid fan? So here's the here's here's the thing. This is a huge huge gap in my gaming education. I've never played a single Metroid game. Well, I well that's actually not too bad because I've played maybe I think there was a couple of Game Boy Advance ones, and I played them for about twenty minutes before I was oh. like, "This isn't really for me." You know, you find that in games. You gotcha, find some gotcha. games everybody True. loves, but you play it and you're like, eh. and then you'll find an obscure game that you adore, and other people are like, "What's wrong with you?" And this was this is one of those games that never stuck with me it never got me and i know i know there's oh, wow. tons of metroid fans out there that and and it is a classic and it deserves the notoriety because i i get the whole notoriety of metroid but it just never really was a game that stuck to me i can completely understand that that is that same thing happens with fighting games for me i just can't get into mm. fighting games at all i used to I like can fighting sit games and watch. Not anymore oh. yeah same here I can sit and watch fighting games, but playing them? Mm-mm. No thanks. No thank you. Next. I'm too involved in story now. I don't know if it's as I'm getting old. I like to. <laughs> I like narrative Probably. or stories evolving more than I like being a badass who can com- complete combos faster or better. Or, I, don't know. True. I don't know what fighting um, games are about anymore. And if the Metroid games also inspired a completely huge, well, was a huge part of spawning a new genre called Metroidvania games. Yes, of course. The, the 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 same gameplay style, right? Exactly. Metroid and Castlevania. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, it's the Castlevania Metroid thing because they are the games play with the kind of same game style, don't they? True. Yeah. True. And this might not be a surprise, but this Axiom Verge game is uh it's down to the T a Metroidvania type game. 
Yes, 100%. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, strange enough, I had the same feelings playing this game than I did playing the 20 minutes of Metroid uh, like 20 oh. minutes ago. <laughs> so, so, yeah, uh, you, you, can't, you can't deny that it is, it is um, carbon copy kind of of the old style of uh, Metroidvania type games. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, though. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. That's the thing, because I mean, you said you didn't like Metroid, well, those mm. 20 minutes that you played earlier. No, it just didn't catch me. And strangely enough, I'm massively into sci-fi and stuff, so it should, you know, I like sci-fi, I'm a a big sci-fi man. But no, just one of those games that just wouldn't imprint on me, so to speak. Okay, well, I'm sure we'll get into that uh, through this episode. Mm. Let's uh, jump into the narrative for Axiom Verge. Yeah, no doubt. What did you think? I thought it was interesting, as most sci-fi games or pieces of fiction tend to be, but I didn't get far enough for it to actually develop. I don't know how, how far you got. I, I, I had a good number of hours in it because, you know, I always I always feel bad when we do these games. And, you know, there's like progression of the story often opens up yeah. better abilities and yes. guns and like things you'll miss out if you don't put the time in. So this that so like I said, I, so I, I thought even though it, it's not a game style I enjoy much, I decided to push through. And I thought I'm sure that the, the, the basic story of it, like the start, I thought was quite fun. I liked it. It got me. Same. I was like, I was invested. I was like, okay. It actually, so like, I, I don't know. I just seem to bring this up, but it actually reminded me a little bit like it was Half Life, but in 16 bit. You know, you're a scientist. You're a Ooh. badass. I know. I felt I had that weird feeling that it was just like Half Life, but I keep picking up Half Life like a weird fanboy. Um, and did you? You're, you're probably too young. You, did you ever play Commander Keen games? I've. Heard of them, and I think I've seen some of it, but no, I've never played Commander Yeah, Keen. that's that's probably a bit forward before. It just also had that same aesthetic, which of course it was also okay. sixteen bits. So, um, so but this the story started off great, but I must admit, when you're you 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 play through it and you're playing some more and playing some more, you kind of go, "What am I doing? Like, why am I doing this? And I can't, I couldn't remember exactly. That's that's part of the story, but it just continues on for a bit too long." Yeah, why like, is all of this happening? Yeah, it's like y- you're playing along and you're enjoying like the, the the platforming and the puzzles and like the enemies and the power ups and stuff like that. And then, but then you're losing like you're like, why am I? I can't remember why I'm doing this. I get there's a For- big baddie at the end of each part, but what, why am I doing this? Like, I don't know. That felt I felt like abandoned by the narrative, so it, to speak. Yeah, yeah. For anyone wondering, I don't think this game did too well. I think it did fine, but I don't think mm. it went. Super great. Um, this game starts off with uh, uh, some narrative where you are busy in a lab doing lab work as a scientist and it explodes, right? Or yeah. collapses or whatever. So it's you can deduce that there was an experiment that gone wrong and the next moment you wake up, you are in the middle of this huge ruined ugh, biomechanical, how do I say this? What used to be the lab. Hmm. And that's when you... That's not. I don't even know if it's the lab. It might be somewhere completely different. Yeah, that's just, just the supposition of the whole situation, isn't it? Yeah. You, you are in an unknown area now. Yeah, but that is, that is... That is exactly how much your, the protagonist, your player character, knows as well. Mm, so mm. we are just as confused as he is. But it just goes on for way mm. too long. Mm. Like you don't you don't really understand why you're doing it like at all, which is it's it a great to, setting. It's a great setting, which is a shame because I can't I can't compare it too much to Metroid because I can't remember how well the story progression did in the Metroid games. Now I I have played a few of them and I have played yeah. I know I played a handful of them and probably if you added it all up it's a few hours. But yeah. I I personally couldn't tell you why Metroid was doing what she was doing. <laughs> I really, I really don't know. Like, I don't. I think... Is she, is she a superhero? Is she? I, I know. I'm probably gonna. Uh, I'm really being mean to the fanboys out there that I don't know this, but I actually do not know what she, she is. Is she capable? Uh, yeah. Is she fighting justice? Is she the good guy fighting the bad guy? I actually don't know what she does. I don't know why. So what I know of the Metroid law or whatever is that Samus Aran is part of some sort of galactic uh, police. Whatever, and mm-hmm. she's usually the first 
So she's like the, the master first... chief of like the galactic. Yes, police. I think so. She's like the master chief of some sort of galaxy or planet or force or whatever, and then she oh. gets sent in as a lone chief. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> to and she's... deal. Okay, okay, that's good. I like I say I genuinely didn't even know that, but okay, that sounds about cliched, but about normal for um, games, which is fair enough. And I guess in theory, this one doesn't really. You don't really know if you're doing what you're doing for the greater good. Like you don't. You you're don't, in a like, situation, sure, but like, are you are you the doing the greater good? Are you doing this for a good, solid reason to save this or to help this or to end this? You don't. And I played a good few hours into it, you know, I, I got, and I still don't really know, maybe I missed it, but I still don't know really, apart from trying to save your own life or get out of there, I don't really know what the, the entire premise was. At least uh, in Metroid, before you get sent on a mission or before the game starts, you get some sort of brief or yeah, like a, uh, I remember that, yeah. you get told what's going on and mm. what your mission is. Mm, yeah, that's true. This in one, this, it wasn't there. nothing. And that's probably not a bad thing because it creates mystery um, mm. and this huge air of tension as to what's going on. But I, I don't know. I would I would like to figure out what's going on sooner rather than later. But yeah, maybe maybe, but maybe that is us. Like we were saying, I, like I said, I love a good story. Maybe maybe sticking to the Metroidvania aspect means you don't build a a fantastic narrative and it's all about gameplay and boss battles. I don't. Like I said, it's a. In a in a world where now narr- games narratives are so good, it does seem a bit mm-hmm. um, I wouldn't say lazy, but missing not to build at least a functional or narrative to go along with what you're doing in today's age. Probably. I suppose a game that treads the line in a good narrative for Metroidvania very well, in my opinion, is Hollow Knight. Ah, uh, yes, I've and that's. I've heard great things, but again, I'm going to anger people. I haven't played that. Oh, yet. you've you've <laughs> not played Hollow Knight. I've not. <laughs> it looks it's, great, though. I, I like I said. It does. It does. It's a great game for Hollow Knight. In Hollow Knight's case, there's not much of a story. There is a story, but it's very light. In mm. Hollow Knight's case, what it does great is it builds lore and characters and dialogue, and you get to follow these characters on some arcs. Hmm. that's great that's fantastic it the game doesn't need a huge story like no Hollow Knight or axiom no, verge hmm. but in that in it then just needs some characters and dialogue and axiom verge doesn't have those either yeah you just need that progression high don't you that you're yes you're actually through the narrative something please yeah. please but yeah like, like i said yeah so narratively it was a, a bit of a letdown but you know, it's it's it 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 is like I said. I think the whole game is like six hundred megabytes, seven hundred megabytes in size. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's tiny. Yeah, so it's 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 maybe I'm ex- we're expecting too much, but I don't think so. I, I think, think with so today's, too. Today's games, you need you know, there's certain things that you should be benchmarked as a standard, and this was a little missing in that regard. I get it. It sounds like we're complaining too much. Yeah, that's what I was thinking I too. Yeah. I don't want that to be the case because it d- it did create an air of mystery quite well. Mm. I mm. just think it let it hang a bit too long without yeah. at least explaining something. Yeah, I agree. But anyway, we we are kind of repeating ourselves now. But yeah, so exactly. But what 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 did you think of the visuals then? The visuals, I think are good but i've always been a sucker for 8-bit visuals for these pixel mm. art games i've always been a sucker i think it's great i have curiosity why like like because i know that there is there is an age gap ladies and gents why why are you a sucker for that type of thing out of curiosity because i almost grew up with it i was even on the cusp uh because yeah uh, games like um asteroids and uh space invaders that was out whilst i was alive or born and that was, I don't know, 6-bit. That was ages ago. I don't even know what those are. And, of course, I grew up with the proper 8, 16-bit type thing. And I think you were... Did you not miss that generation, so to speak? Weren't you born when, I like, did. Uh, PlayStation I did. I did 1 came it. out, so? So is it yeah, just yeah. the... I... You just love the retro, retro style of games, do you? I do. I don't know why. I think it might be because I grew up with a very shitty computer and a Game hmm. Boy Color. Hmm. But I like the way these pixel games... Look, like I just bit, like it. I can't explain why. Because of the bright colours and the dark colours and just the the simplicity of. No, no, no get, get me wrong. I, I was from that era, so of course I do like I do like these games. I always find it interesting how younger people like them too. Because I can, you look at games like um, 
a triangle strategy and octopath traveler and they do that really <clears throat> excuse me almost high definition 2d 3d yes. pixelated art now that's it's just as good that's impressive like i don't even know how they do it that's really cool but then you uh -huh. compare that to something like um i don't know the original mario or even if you want to go further back like asteroids and stuff i can understand yeah. where people think like the pixelated art is is octopath traveler but and they don't like the old art because it's just bright pink with a black background or bright green with a black background. Um, but I'm always intrigued that you, like I say, you like that side of things, which is, which is, is like I said, I find it uh, fascinating that your generation and younger can still like the retro style, which you'd presume yeah. they don't like because eh, it's old and, eh. you know, I like my 3D graphics and my textures and cell shading and shadow effects. Yes. And all that. But no, it's I cool. I do like, like it. Mm. And I think there is a market for it. Otherwise, companies like Square Enix wouldn't be making games like oh, Triangle yes, Strategy no. and Octopath think, Traveler. No, I, it's obviously a lot bigger than I even know. I agree entirely. You wouldn't be making those games, would you, if there wasn't a solid market for it? Which, yeah. which is actually quite... Sorry, I've got to go to red now. I actually kind of like that... I know the, the industry now, as we're all grown-ups, industry is now pointing out to all the things we liked as kids is now coming back as like mainstream <laughs> adult stuff. I'll be yeah. Dungeons and Dragons or Pokemon cards or, or, or collectibles or even like old school new games but with old school styles or even remasters. It's quite fun living in an age where when you were a geek or a nerd as a child is coming back into like strong force and like fashionable and stuff like that. I know, I just find that fun. It is. No, it's, it's nice. It is nice. I'm not going to lie. Although I think... This might be a bigger conversation. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, sorry. Episode. Sorry, yeah, I've gone off on the I've gone off on one, sorry. If um, you'd like to hear us talking about other things in bonus episodes, subscribe to our Patreon and you can have all the bonus episodes you want. That's right. You can listen to me just rant all day long. Don't worry. That's all for you. <laughs> anyway, visuals. Some do want them. <laughs> visuals. Uh, visually, it was bird. good. It's one of the pluses I gave it because it's yeah, again, it hits that that retro niche so well it hits that mark yes. on like oh i remember this and oh yes that is so you know especially the boss fights and everything yes. about like even like the movement of the boss fights and stuff like that it was it's good such nostalgia and such like oh yes i remember Very true. this um i think that was that was my favorite part of this game was the boss fights yeah, they were very nice yeah and they were di they were difficult to a like i said I, um I don't play these games that often, and you, it's just like just like a uh, Dark Souls and stuff. You got to learn the patterns and dodge and True. roll and use this uh, specific weapon and stuff like that. And no, they were fun. They were they, they were definitely the, the the best part of the game for me. I enjoyed we could, it. it was a great deal. We can talk more about the uh, Sorry, bosses boss in fights. gameplay, but mm. they looked fantastic. Mm. I like the way they were designed, and they were designed to enhance uh, uh, their move set or the gameplay. Which mm. I think doesn't happen a lot. No, I, I, I agree. It's like, um, it's, it's one of those things which, yeah, again, the, the, the visual style and even the shading of the, the bad guys. And even later on where, the, where you get into the darker areas and you, they're just using lights and darks on the bad guys. It's such a... And to, again, I still can't get around one guy did this. You know, how, how can one guy be so good at like... <laughs> visually and the audio and then either. programming it like 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 you kind of just want to hate him a little bit because he does it so well <laughs> like the, it's literal artistry on yes. a level that a lot of people myself included don't even really understand like how to add this level of black to that little bit of white to give the proper look of a sphere or a roundness or something yes. like that and all this and he does it he nails it with only what 16 bits or whatever that you know and it is it's such a pretty game it is a pretty game it is. It is. I don't think there's much more we could say. This there, there's the fine line with these pixel art games, with it mm. looking pretty and it looking shitty. And I really mm. like the way this one turned out. Yeah, no doubt. And yet again, one guy, bravo! I just can't. I can't get over the fact. <laughs> bravo, that he's Thomas Hap. Well yeah, done. Thomas Hap. Well done. You also said he made the he scored the soundtrack. He made yeah. all the sounds. Yeah, it's well. It, at least it gives him uh, the credit uh, credits for a composer. So I can only imagine that's the soundtrack yeah. and the you know the audio the 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 devices and the bad guys and all that jazz, which again is crazy. When uh, these games the, come out mm, that were made by one person, because mm. Stardew Valley was also made by one person. Uh, that's true. Yeah, true. 
How? 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 Yeah, like, has has game making become really easy that I don't know about, <laughs> or, or are people just getting more talented, which is even I don't know, which is scarier. But yeah, oh. how do they do that? How 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 do they have time? How do they have that level of skill? How I I also love the idea that they got that level of love for something like. Yes, the uh, passion. Know, to be, yeah, to be able to go in like, I mean, these people probably work normal jobs, and so they literally uh-huh. work normal jobs, go home, and then work again on something that they, they just have to do, or their day's not like a day. They 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 think they've wasted a day if they haven't done a texture for this or audio for. Oh, that. completely. Oh, I think that's, that's passion, I think baby. Yeah, that's I love passion it. for a project. Yeah, no doubt. I'm like we have for crit- uh, critical arcade, the critical arcade podcast. Tell your parents. But like the um, soundtrack on this also hit the nostalgia box button really hard, like really hard. E- even though that it, you know it reminds yeah again it does remind you of the Metroidvania type aspect, but that's a good thing. Yes. You know, this has it ticks all those boxes, be it the bad guys, the the weapon sound effects. Yes, you know yes. it's all that retro styled blasting and st- and jumping and and I know it just it does it just hits them so well. Retro is the perfect word I'd use to describe not only the audio but every single part of this game because it does feel very, very retro and it was made, I think, with that, uh, 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 re- with with the retro. How do, how do I call it? With the word retro in mind. Yeah, hundred percent. Right? This, you can en- see this the- entire game, all the music was made with eight-bit uh, uh, synthesizers, mm. and everything just sounds so in place. Yeah, you can see like Thomas Happ must have had a, a supreme love for retro in these types of games because, like yeah. you said, with even getting the synthesizers and the that must take time to source those out and to put it together. Truly, and, and, you, and that love must have been part of it. Which and it, like he says, the idea that he did the the composition and the sound effects and music, it is all so spot on. Like especially when you pair it with the visuals because they do go hand in hand, it just really does work. You know the the. the the, the pictures of what you're doing and the sound effects that go along with it are just so, are just so, like I said, I can't keep saying, but the nostalgia of like being in a 80s or 90s arcade with your friends <laughs> shoving in uh, quarters into the machines whilst you listen to the the, sh- uh, the, the the noise around you just gives that same feel. Agreed, agreed. And I think you get that feel. I think the the, the audio and maybe a tiny bit of visuals are the only parts that you can get from games without actually playing them. If you oh, walk yeah. past an arcade machine and you hear mm. that that familiar sound, you get that sound without playing the game. So yeah, just yeah, no, walking through entirely. an arcade mm. is one mm. massive nostalgia bomb. Oh yes, no, and yeah, I agree. And there was there was certain like you hear the racing game over there, and you hear the, yes. the time crisis over there and stuff. You agree, it is. It's 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 a it's a unique sound of its own, which yeah, again and is a very fun. Um, I think he, yes, very fun. And I think mm. he captured that in this game. I don't mm. know how. I have absolutely no idea how, but he did capture that in this game. Mm. No, I agree. Very like impressive. I said, it's that passion that's coming across then in his in his work, which is, like I said, it's, it's, it's very good. What did the you biggest think? Part, Go on. Yes, the, big, the biggest uh, part I think that Thomas had focused on in this game would be the Mm. gameplay this being a metroidvania uh, there's a huge emphasis put on the gameplay of this game the exploration Mm. um, the power-ups the different guns the enemies uh, the platforming yeah it's 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 80 percent of this game is gameplay 100 percent. and like you said if you played any metroid game you know what you're in for you're you're you backtracking to go grab that power up because you've got a different gun now you've got uh, elements yeah. that new rooms you can now progress through because you've got this and that or your health has increased you know it's the standard uh, schematics of like a metroid or castlevania game which is which is fine like i said it's it's what you'd expect in these types of things and it is a lot of fun they it does have uh, uh, another level of he hasn't just made it a, a clone he has tricked out a few things i like you said you didn't play that much but the the what the weapons and the tech you get later yeah. is actually quite a lot. It's another different. It's a different level. He has put newer techniques into this well, game. Like, okay, before we yeah. go, how far did you get into this game? To which uh, map did you so get? This is one of the weird things. I'm really bad at maps. I could. I got. <laughs> I got to. You got this little um, drone that you could send. You, a little, oh. little drone you could send into areas to see if. Um, 
there were any bad guys in there and you could call it back. He was handy. Oh, yeah. okay. I never got the drone. How far did you get? What, like I say, what it, weapon upgrade did you get to? Like, that's how I really progressed. If you pause the game, you can actually see on the left-hand side the bigger map areas. I got to the third oh, I didn't even... bigger map area. I, I just got the... What's the power-up? Uh, you get a, a laser that's drill right. yeah, something right. attachment that's, to your yeah. gun. And what was the other one? Blocks that are corrupted. Yeah, again. that's right. The the glitch gun thing. Un uncorrupt, right. then you could actually jump that's on right. them. That's right, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you got that one. Yeah, yeah, I just got that, and that was just before the start of the third yeah, map. Yeah, okay. That's how far I got. Well, yeah, I got part of stats. I got a jacket that you could phase through barriers with. Um, Ooh. Yeah, that was cool. Um, and I forget there was a, there was a, there was also I didn't get to it, but there was a thing called a glitch gun in there, which which is a fun premise. You have a gun that you can shoot at the enemies, and when you when you hit the enemies, it actually glitches to I don't know how to describe it. Um, almost landscape of what the game could be. So you could shoot one enemy, and it could become a lesser enemy or a worse enemy, or it could also become a rock or a door. Or, you know, just a <laughs> random piece of environment, which you had to use. How many times can you shoot them? I think it was uh, unlimited, but you could use that to solve puzzles. So you could shoot a flying thing and it would turn into a rock. And then you could use that rock to jump to the platform on top. Oh, you I know, see. You know, like a puzzle mechanic. This game is good. Yeah, so that he did. This game was. He put some interesting new about. mechanics in there instead of just a different gun or a different you know, a more powerful rocket or something like that. That is he good. Did put more stuff into it. That is good. Mm. But I must admit on this... Thank this, you. I don't know about this. In the same thing, like you said, like, now I know this is a Metroid and a, a thing. I find the maps just, like, confusing. I don't know if I'm just an old man. And I know you could bring up the big map thing, but, the, <laughs> but there was one aspect, like, if you don't play this game, like, from the beginning to the end... And you come back two days later and you jump in. There's just an aspect to it where you're like, what am I doing? Like, okay, I remember I've got that weapon. What's going on? Why does everything look yeah, the same? Yeah, and I got that weapon and that device, but I can't remember where I'm supposed to be going because there's so much. you got to look at the map and go, oh, I haven't been through that door yet and that door yet and that door yet. I don't know. I found... I agree with you. A... I agree with you. I was looking. I was looking at the map constantly. I needed to look where. I needed to go where. I haven't explored mm. where there are unopened doors, uh, unexplored hallways, um, and they were everywhere. So there was always some place to go. Mm. And but if I didn't rely on the map, I had absolutely no idea where I was because most of these, most of these maps, these hallways, these areas, they have. They look. They are. Uh, a bit dis you could distinguish them a tiny yeah. bit like this they are a bit same biomechanical yeah, exactly, hallway yeah. is pink yeah, exactly. this biomechanical hallway is mm. purple it did some even though they were different colors and stuff and you get that you're in a, almost like a a living like you say biomechanical area they do somewhat turn into yeah damn i've been down this one i think or have i well, let me check the map and i've been <laughs> down this one. Oh damn I think that <laughs> have i been down this one no yeah and it gets yeah. a bit like frustrating it does yeah. it does the only part that was instantly distinguishable to me was, I think it was on the second map, it seems like an an undead city yeah, type of right. place or temple. Yeah, like a catacomb. You know, yeah, you, no, I'm with you. you know that you've played this game. You know what mm. I'm talking about. Catacombs. Yeah. I think that's much better. There are zombies that's running right, around yeah. and there are just piles and piles and piles of bodies. That's right. And those zombies were a pain in the ass. It's Oh, they I were those, those things. this entire <laughs> this entire place was very distinguishable from That's the true, rest yeah. and i immediately knew where yeah. i was when i was yeah, in exactly. there and if, if, um the sound was different the enemies was different and if i'd saved but there and gone back one in, I'd, yeah, out exactly. of ten yeah exactly it got two like luckily i played and then played like two days later but if i'd picked this up like a month later or something like that i would have been oh, entirely no. lost with whatever was going on Oh yeah, and I feel I for yeah, sure. I Good luck. If yeah, and I feel that's a bit of a a weird disconnect there. I don't know why. Maybe maybe it's Metroid, and that's always been the style, and that's why he kept it that way. Maybe, like I said, I don't know that well enough. Or it just might be that this is his first game, and 
there's some yeah, no. this is an area that he can improve upon for this yeah that's true that's true that, you know you got to give him credit for that yeah i agree the rest of it uh, besides the areas i think uh, the best part of this game is definitely the guns and the power oh, yeah you know, like I said, they're exciting. Even when you it's see them floating in the next room, good. you just want to go, how do I get in Very there? Very good. You Exactly. You never know what you're going yeah, to get. Exactly. Uh, even if it's a new gun, well, it's not just going to be a shooty yeah, gun. Yeah, like a different, like a rocket or it's a laser this gonna time. It's going to be interesting. No, it is. No, and and exactly. a lot of them also were guns that help the puzzle mechanic. Like that simple one yes. that uh, you shot and then you pressed again, it burst into like a star of bullets, which helped you switch on the portal or door buttons or circles right? they were thought about yeah they no it, like i said about. Was, are... and it was like you said as soon as you saw a room with any sort of glowing orb or special box or whatever you were like oh i need to go get in that it's like the only thing that really mattered at that time was i need to go get that because i need to know what it is yeah. like and and i know that's what metroid does very well as well like the any time that you get a power up or a new weapon or a new something or other you know it just adds that level that that like oh yeah let's go find some bad guys like all right, let's <laughs> test this baby out aspect to it, which is a lot of fun. That is, that is, that is a lot of fun. But it's it's a good thing we got all of these guns and all of these power ups because this game is hard as balls. <laughs> it is tough. That's true. It's difficult. I was like sailing through it quite well. I took on the first boss. I was taking on these little things and the bugs and the little. I was like cool, and I was kind of happy that like when you killed some of them, they gave you some life. I was like, oh, that's handy, because yes, then I yes. can just mine, Very mine nice. them for some life if I get... So that was cool. And then I killed the big <laughs> bad guy first, or the first bad guy, and I'm like, first time, and I was like, oh, this game's easy. <laughs> I, I kid you not. The thing that completely owned <laughs> me was one of those zombies for the first time I met them. I was like, oh, okay, man. what's that? So I shot it once, and I was like, oh. And then it just started... And it just decimated. <laughs> yeah, it just sprinted at you, and I was like, whoa, what's going on? And I just like, <laughs> no! I was jumping and panicking, like, whoa! <laughs> it was like being uh, Elden Ring for the first time. <laughs> whoa, what am I doing? And it, I, it killed me instantly. I completely... <laughs> I get this because the exact same thing happened <laughs> really? to me. <laughs> he obviously is the hardest enemy in the game, then, obviously. Like I said, that was the, such I mean, a shock. The first... <laughs> It was. It was a shock because these zom- these zombies are difficult. Yeah. They, I couldn't get them the first couple of times, and then I got this, uh, uh, uh this, this electric shotgun type yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. And that just destroyed yeah, them, so true. I didn't have any trouble with <laughs> those yeah. anymore. But then there are enemies that stick to the roof mm. and shoot you with blood or whatever. Yeah, that's true. And then I had trouble with those. Because you got to do. There's that weird. Oh, well, I say weird. Maybe it's not. But that mechanic where if you press backwards. You can then point your gun up, you know, diagonally, can't you? Which, uh-huh, which for uh-huh, me was a uh-huh. bit of a strange. Like again, I've not played these games. That's a bit of a strange mechanic when I just want to kind of shoot diagonally, but you can't. You have to press backwards and then shoot. Uh, which, which, what actually works as a mechanic? I'm just not used to it. So a lot of the times, you know, my brain maybe not works that fast. Where I got to stand still, shoot, and dodge at the same time. So I found that a bit yeah. complicated. And like you say, those things in the ceiling that used to shoot you were a pain in the ass. But they, they really hmm. were. But I think another reason was that on the SNES, there weren't that many buttons. Yeah, true. Very true. It was simple key mapping type scenario, wasn't it? Exactly. There were just a certain amount of buttons and the game uh, designers had to hmm. make do with these amount of buttons. Hmm. And I'm wondering if Thomas Hepp also had this in mind when designing oh, yeah. this game? I, b- I don't know. I believe know. this game was like ported to almost all the consoles and PC. So it does sound like if you, it was on Switch, the uh, I'm not sure if it was the Wii or the Wii U. You know, you know they had that... Uh, the oh, Wii okay. U had that online arcade thing. I don't know what they called it. Yes. Um, and it went on a Switch game, uh, Nintendo, I think Nintendo, but definitely Xbox, PlayStation and all that. So if you think about it, the PC was the odd one out when it comes to keyboard on mouse compared to everything Truly. else and yeah i agree did you play this with a keyboard or a controller no i played this with a keyboard just uh, because i was lazy oh, okay. i can be bothered right. with. Okay. i played this with my controller mm. and it somehow it felt fine although somewhere down the line i got a bit confused because every power up needed to be assigned to a different That's button right. Um, and then choosing a different gun also needed to be a different mm-hmm. button. And it was uh, fine, but it wasn't very intuitive. Yeah, it's the same with the keyboard, but that's not really that shocking. It was. There was also um, 
oh, yeah. this would this like this is one of the things I put down as a performance issue, which I was I was literally just trying to find something performance wise. Uh, okay. Um, is that the mapping, okay. especially on the keyboard, the key, the the mapping for the default key selection was just odd. Like opening your menu and closing your menus and opening the map was like assigned to the space button, which is I don't know, it's a weird dis odd. yeah, like to do it and and. You know, you got the W S A D, and then you got Q and E to to access other things, which makes sense. We've all got that feeling in our hands. It's a default muscle memory now. But to like engage the the the, the menus or select or to go back, you had to press the space button, which, which was I know it was weird. But oh, this, but this yeah. works on the premise that, that it was is weird. designed for a controller, in my opinion. Exactly. Yeah. I don't think. I think the keyboard and mouse is very accurate. Mm. I don't think the keyboard and mouse is very, very well designed for no, games. No, not, not these types. It's yeah. not designed no. for games no. at all. Not even mm. close. So for first-person shooters, people would argue with you. The keyboard and mouse is... Of optimal. course, of course, of course. Oh, of course. I won't argue mm. with them at all. For To shoot the mouse is perfect. Yeah, it is. But anything no, else, I agree. the keyboard mm. is just not designed to play games. No, I agree entirely. That's why That's why I fundamentally have consoles, because the gaming experience is so much better with the controller with some games compared to a keyboard and a mouse. I agree. Yeah. I agree entirely. I just love a key controller mm. sitting down back in a couch. Yeah, exactly. Did you have any performance um, issues? Besides gameplay, I did not have any performance issues. Uh, this game ran yeah, beautifully. It ran fine. Yeah, because it's only it 600 was... megabytes or so in size. It's, 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 exactly. Like, it was fun to be, like, it, it, you know, it takes less than Chrome you know, to, to run. So, <laughs> so what else is really going to... Nothing really going to go wrong there. You know, um... No, 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 no. I scored it great for performance, <laughs> yeah, exactly. you but uh, then again, it's got it doesn't have a lot to. to but yeah, I scored it well. I scored with. it well for performance because, like you said, like you could probably run it on your smartwatch or whatever. But that's a good thing, you know. It, it, I don't mind that. I think that's one of the points of the game. It's almost you could probably it play is. that in the browser, right? Thing. This could almost be played in like a browser type game. But anyway, performance-wise, it yes. ran fine. There was no issues whatsoever. This, you know, it's there's just... not really much to say. No, exactly. Go on. Okay. <laughs> va- Besides performance, yeah, value, value for, money. for money. This is this is a bit of a this is this is this is I don't want to say a tricky one, but this is one where we do agree yeah. <laughs> that this game is doesn't perform extremely. Yeah, well. it's like this was really confusing. I don't know if you came across the same thing as I did because I I was I, I'm a Steam person, so I got it. From yeah. Steam, and one thing that blew my mind is that this game was more expensive than Axiom Verge Two. Like, and and by quite <laughs> quite some margin, it wasn't. And and I, I had to double check. I had to make sure that Axiom Verge Two wasn't on sale. Like it was, you know, it's Halloween and yeah. all this, and maybe it was on sale. It wasn't. So the default first game I was more so. expensive. <laughs> so the first game was just more expensive. Yeah, because. Right, 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 right. I, Why? Yeah, I didn't understand that at all. And taking into account, you know, this isn't the biggest depth, and it hasn't got. It is. It's a fun game, but it's not an amazing game. And there's a part of me that's like, I really do want to, you know, what's his name? I've forgotten his name now. What's his mate? Thomas, Thomas Hap. Hap. He, I, I, he should get all the money. And I'm really like, I say, like he did it on his own. He, he reserves all the kudos and the money and financial success and stuff. But I don't. I paying. More for the first game than the second. This this game, and it is relatively old now, should have been a ten dollar game like max, but it wasn't. It should, it should, it should definitely have been that. But uh, I just googled now, and it seems like Thomas had published this game himself as uh, well. Yeah, yes, yeah, exactly. So, so it's his fault. So there are absolutely no costs yeah. that he needs to pay besides. I think it's thirty percent for Steam. Yeah, that seems about right. Yeah, they take their cut. But yeah, I thought that was, that this- was strange. Thomas, come on, Thomas. There's no need yeah. for this game on, to still yeah. cost what? What's it? Twenty, thirty yeah, dollars? Like twenty dollars? Yeah, and it's yeah. I, I still can't get over it. I'm still shocked that like it's a good game, and for like must, Metroid fans, it's a, like a must-have game. But it is like, yes. what five, six, seven years old now. It should be that. It's seven years that old. Should be like oh, Axiom Verge is out. I just want to buy the first one first so that I can play that, and that should be the quick uh-huh, little uh-huh, uh-huh. chuck a little bit of money. So then I can pay the premium price for the next one. That seems reasonable. We've all done that, but this was this was odd, and yeah, it, it was a Thomas. Yeah, come on, Thomas. Come on, Thomas. Yeah, we all need to heat our <laughs> pools and stuff, but come on. <laughs> 
<laughs> so we scored this game accordingly because the value for money is not where it should be. No, I agree. It's a bit too expensive yeah. for the seven-year-old pixel art game made by one yeah. guy. Which is a shame because it is a good game. <laughs> but yeah, it is. It is a definitely a good game. So what did we rate it all in all? Dave and I... We got these scores, we put them in our calculator, and then we gave Axiom Verge the letter grade rating of C+. Isn't which too is, bad. It goes in the same score it's not, as Fear. No, it's not bad at all. That's a, it's the same as Fear. That's great. It's the same as Overwatch 2, which every time I look at Overwatch 2, I think to myself, maybe we were too nice to it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it yeah. Like, but to be honest, if I solo, if I made a game solo, yeah. th- it would be a hard F. Yeah, no, no, hundred percent. Like even even if I a big fat red put F. effort into it, I'm pretty sure. I don't know. <laughs> Could you? Oh no, yeah, again, I'm probably showing my age. Back in the day, one of the big things was to make a a skiing game, which was um, it was just one of those simple mechanics where you, what that was years ago when you every every boy wanted to make their own game, right? And one of the easiest games to okay. make was. You know the simple mechanic where you had a uh, an item or a person and you move it left to right and you dodge trees and stumps and deer. Okay. And you always wanted yes. to make a skiing game because they were the easiest skiing game. You just used, and it was the same premise. And back in the day, it was that type of game. And I still, to this day, said if I tried to make a game, I'd probably only be able to. Oh. I'd still only be able to probably do that little skiing game where you go left and right and dodge <laughs> trees. Sorry, a bit of a nostalgia. Me too, probably. Nineteen eighties hits there for everybody. <laughs> That's completely fine. Uh, we'd have a skiing game and then we'd have a, a critical arcade branded Yeti Huff? Yeah, chase yeah, you exactly. down. That would work. That would work. I like that. <laughs> they don't, now we've got to make it. Oh, what have you done? We, we, now, have to, <laughs> we, now, we now have to make this, this Yeti chasing skiing game. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks everyone for joining in. Um, for this week's episode of Critical Arcade. Thank you very much. Uh, tell us, tell us, uh, Dave, what do we have to look forward to next week? The next game is on everybody's wish list this Christmas, I'm sure, even as a 34-year-old. Um, it's Pokemon <laughs> Scarlet and Violet, because we've, got, we've yes. got to catch them all. You know, that addiction has still lasted 25 years. Oh, man. <laughs> yes, because I want to be the very oh, best. Oh, yes, the best. <laughs> There ever, there ever was. was. Yeah, if, <laughs> like, I'm still 34, and I swear I still know all the lyrics to that song. Because it's a... Ba- I don't know, ladies and gentlemen, that's a banger. To catch I- them <laughs> is my real test. To train them is my cause. See? It's a banging <laughs> tune. I don't care what you say. But yeah, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet uh, out on... Yes, um, the brand the 18th, new release. Yeah, that's going to be fun, I hope. Definitely. Uh, for join us for next week's episode. Uh, if you want to catch me, hit me up on Twitter at it's time for Nick. Uh, if if you want to follow Dave, Dave, where can they find you? <laughs> they can find me. Uh, they can find me just trying to develop a old school snowboarding game with old school software <laughs> and trying to do at least as good as Thomas Hap, but failing. So I'll, so go away because I'm not going to be in a good mood. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that's the best I got. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you everyone for joining us this week's episode much. of the Critical Arcade Podcast. Please join us next week. Cheers. Cheers.